Hello everyone! Today we're here for another episode of Let's Get Crafty! And today we're going to talk about Swap Meet. Swap Meet is one of those quintessential, really good cards you want to look out for when we're playing with the Exiles and Partisans deck. It is pretty much good for every faction, so I'm always excited when I draw it if there's any possibility of crafting it in the near future because it's kind of one of those static upgrades that'll just help you turn after turn. Alright, let's just jump into why that is and what it does. So, Swap Meat is a rabbit card that costs just one rabbit crafting piece for what it does, which is fantastic. And it says, once in Birdsong, in Birdsong, not at the start, so anytime in Birdsong, which is going to be key, may take a random card from another player, then give them a card. So this is something that people get confused. They think that because it's called Swap Meet and you're giving someone else a card, a lot of people confuse it and they think that that means they must swap their two cards. But that's not the case. This is just a, you take a card from another person, it goes into your hand, and then immediately you give them a card from your hand. That means that it's allowed to be that same card that you took. So even if you took a card that's not really that strong, it's not practical for you in this moment, you can give it right back. And it might seem like that wasn't a very good use of the swap meet because you didn't get any value out of it. But no matter what, you got some value, you got information, you got to take a peek at one card in their hand, and that, depending on the faction, could tell you a lot about what their turn's plans are likely to be, or what their potential is for if they can craft it for scoring, or if they're going to be able to use it to train an officer, depending on which faction, of course. So the information is a subtle little benefit to this card, on top of obviously being able to switch out the cards in your hand. Right? It's not a boost to the card wealth, it's not going to get you more cards, but what it does is it allows you to improve the quality of the cards you have. So it improves uh, it allows you to curate your hand a little bit better to improve card quality rather than quantity. There's another card in this deck that will do that, and we'll get to actually two of them. We'll get to those later. So let's do a little bit of an overview. There are two copies of this card, so pretty common, and it gets you a better chance of getting the cards that you need. So we all know this sometimes, especially certain factions that only get to draw one or two cards per turn. You might take those two draws and neither one of them are what you necessarily need in order to progress through your game. So Swap Meet will allow you another chance at saying, okay, I really just need this bird card. Come on, let me grab. Yes, and then you got it. All right, so that's going to be useful for pretty much every faction. Just that extra chance at getting something useful. And it obviously works better if you have some extra cards that you can give back, right? I found myself in this trap a few times where I excitedly take a card from someone, look down and realize, well, everything in my hand was already really good, so even though I like this card and I wish I could keep it, I have to give you something back, so uh, I guess I'm just going to have to give it back. Alright, so it works better if you plan for your swap meet the turn before so that you're aware, okay, I have this leftover uh, already crafted crossbow, so it's not... It's basically a junk card, and that's going to be the card that I will think to give just in case my card draw on this turn turns out to be really good. It's good to hold on to just one junk card that will be your fodder for the swap meet. And the hand info that I was talking about can also be extremely valuable. So the Sabo ability of this card is quite high, but there's something that you can do to play with that. If you see an opponent has a saboteurs card, you can say, okay, hold on, don't use saboteurs on me and destroy my swap meet, I'll make you a deal. I will use swap meet on these other players and not swap meet you, right? It would be kind of dumb if you decided to use your swap meet on the saboteurs player because that's just asking for them to saboteur your swap meet. Of course, certain, certain circumstances will allow you to do that anyway, like if you have coffin makers or propaganda bureau also, then they're probably not going to use saboteurs on swap meet if you have a much better card. Or if they're on the cusp of winning the game, it's kind of understandable that 
you're going to want to use swap meet on them or if someone else has an even better card that is more of an emergency than your swap meet so just think about that little negotiation side of it but generally if i have a saboteurs card and i'm worried that this other player is going to start taking my cards i'm going to use saboteurs on their swap meet because this is one of those cards that does affect enemies so certain cards like charm offensive are a little bit less aggressive right they don't negatively impact enemies so that card is less likely to get saboteured versus this one can negatively affect someone therefore high sabo ability let's get right into the factions so marquise de cat marquise de cat loves this card if i start with this card in my hand i'm almost always going to try to craft it on my turn one and hold on for, uh, hold on to it as long as i can because Swap Meet gets you more chances at getting the bird cards that you're really looking for and craftable items. Right, so the Marquise de Cat has pretty poor card draw, right? In general, you're going to be drawing two cards per turn if you get up to three recruiters, which is an important threshold for the cats. But only two card draw means that oftentimes you're just not going to have chances at crafting and you're going to have kind of stale cards that don't get used for a whole lot. Well, with Swap Meet, it's another opportunity to draw and try to get a bird card, which will make a decent turn into a potentially great turn with four actions. Or if I only have that one uh, rabbit crafting piece, well, Swap Meet gives me more opportunities to maybe draw tunnels or a boot or charm offensive or something like that. And it will help you to diversify your hand for the purposes of field hospitals. I've been in so many situations where I look really threatening, but I look at my hand and I have only Fox cards in my hand, meaning, okay, if I get battled in Fox, I can use field hospitals, no problem. But these rabbit warriors, these cat warriors that are sitting in rabbit clearings, if any of them get battled, I can't use field hospitals. So I love ending my turn with at least one card of each suit as the Marquise de Cat. That way, no matter what area I get battled in, I could probably save some uh, cat warriors to reduce the amount of times I'm going to need to recruit on the following turn. I give this an A rating. It's a very good card for the cats, but as usual, the cats don't have these amazing interactions with the cards because the Marquise de Cat is a very straightforward faction. There are some cards like this that just have really cool interactions with other factions especially those that act in birdsong so great card but s tier is going to be a special thing for us eerie dynasties so this card is amazing for the eerie especially if the only card or cards that you have in your hand just don't work for your decree this happens a lot too i I've, I've drawn two cards in my evening and both of them are fox well Maybe I don't want a fox card in my decree. Maybe a single fox card is going to force me into turmoil because I can't reach a fox clearing at this point. Maybe I'm totally cut off from all fox clearings. So any fox uh, card in my decree is just going to completely sink me. But swap meet means you have another chance at getting the card, the suit that you do want that's going to be really great for your decree. So it's kind of an extra chance. And the Eerie, along with some other factions, are very sensitive to card suits. And yes, it does mitigate your poor card wealth. This is a similar thing with the Marquise de Cat, where Eerie and Cats only draw two cards per turn in general. But unlike the Cats, where using the cards is optional, for the Eerie, putting a card into the Decree every turn is mandatory. So in a way, they have even more poor card wealth. So being able to get that extra... Ah, cool, good. It is something that I need as opposed to what I had in my hand is very, very strong for the Eerie, particularly because they're more card dependent than the cats. And because the Eerie are constantly going out and battling, this swap meet is a good opportunity to just switch a card with someone that you intend to battle, right? Like if somebody over here is someone you must battle because of your decree, well, I'll probably swap meet with them just in case. And then, oh, you did have an ambush perfect either you take it from them and you can keep it or at least now you know they have it you can plan for it you can maybe give it back and say well instead of 
moving two warriors into that clearing. Now I move four in order to plan for that ambush. So that information is extremely important for the Eerie because of that requirement to battle a lot of the time. And because of those two things, because of the dependence on card suits, and because the dependence on battling, I will give the Eerie an S tier for swap meet. S for swap meet. Very, very strong card. I love crafting this if I have the opportunity as the Eerie. Next up is the Woodland Alliance. So a lot of these cards that are in Birdsong, as opposed to the start of Birdsong, are going to be really great for factions that do important things in their birdsong step, right? Just like the Woodland Alliance, the Corvids, and others. So, oh, what happened here? There we go. <laughs> Hit the wrong button. So, some suits are junk. I just finished a game as the Woodland Alliance where we were on the winter map and the entire northern strip was all fox clearings, meaning everything to the south, which on the winter map is where you want to be, as the Win uh, Woodland Alliance, all of these um, southern clearings were rabbits and mice. So I wanted as many rabbit and mouse supporters as I could get, but my supporter stack just kept getting filled with fox cards, and I didn't want them because they weren't helping me to propel myself. So being able to switch cards and get a not-so-important suit out of my hand away from me and get some good suited cards that I can now use to mobilize or train an officer because of course my bases are in the south. That is another great use for swap meet, particularly for the Woodland Alliance because the suit dependence and just how cut off they can get even more so than the Eerie. And the Woodland Alliance being a very, very crafty faction, you can steal good crafts. In fact, because our ability to do this in Birdsong means that we'll be able to find out what we're going to get from swap meet before we start spreading. Here's a situation. I have a choice between spreading into a rabbit or spreading into a fox clearing because I don't have enough supporters to do both. It's a choice. If I have swap meet, well, I'm going to go first, grab a card and say, oh, coins, you say? Well, then thank you very much. I'll keep this coins card, give you something else. And now knowing what I got from swap meet, I am going to choose to spread my uh, sympathy token into a rabbit clearing in order to now do this craft. So being able to do this before any faction that can do the swap meet before they place crafting pieces that same turn is going to be very valuable. Other factions don't have this benefit, but Woodland Alliance does. So very, very nice ability. And also you can take a peek at someone else's hand and get a little prediction and say, oh, you have a fox card, huh? Well, I don't want this card. I'll give it back to you. But in that case, I will spread my sympathy into your area, knowing that you're not going to want to move into there because outrage, right? So you'll know what um, cards they'll want to avoid giving you. Sometimes if I am battling the Woodland Alliance, I only like to move and battle the Wood Alliance and generate outrage if my hand is totally clear of those cards because then they'll just be drawing supporters from the deck. But if I can see they have something valuable, then I can use that information to spread sympathy into their areas. And because of all three of these reasons, I'm going to give Swap Meet an S tier rating. There's going to be a few S tiers uh, for this card because it's just so practical and a lot of factions do have these cool interactive effects with them. Next up is Vagabond. Vagabond is the quintessential faction I think of, of factions that don't have very strong uses and needs for card wealth, but there are still certain things you can do with it. So for one, a common strategy at high levels is to hand lock items, particularly tea and hammer and sometimes swords are cards that people might draw and say, oh, the anvil card, huh? Well, this is just going to live in my hand for the rest of the game. I will never spend it, and therefore the Vagabond cannot get that hammer. Or a T, okay, I'll craft it, but I'll craft it on turn six as opposed to crafting it on turn two. That way I still get those points, but I deny the Vagabond several turns of having the T. Well, if you have swap meat, especially if you have an inkling that someone might have a card that you want, you can swap meet them 
and have a chance at grabbing a hand-locked item. It's a pretty slim chance, but knowing that you have swap meet means that that player might be at a little bit scared and go, ah, they're gonna keep swap meeting me and maybe get this hammer. Okay, I might as well discard it or I might as well craft it and get my value from it now rather than let the Vagabond take it and then they get the hammer anyway and those two points of crafting. So that little psychological game might be helpful for grabbing the hand-locked items. And it could also help with aiding, right? Especially um, Vagabonds like the Vagrant, where a lot of their points are gonna come from aiding enemies. If you have all different suits, right? A fox, a mouse, and a rabbit. Well, having duplicates will save you on boots from having to move, aid, move, aid again, move, aid again. But if I use swap meet, hey, look, there's a bird card or there's another mouse. I'll get rid of this fox card and now I can aid three cards all in one turn. And now all of a sudden we are allied. So uh, swap meet does help a lot with aid strategies and with potentially getting some suit locked cards or hand locked cards that might be very useful as craftables. So we're going to give it a B rating. It's good. But these things I talked about are very situational, okay? Aid strategies are pretty situational, um, unless you're the Vagrant or some other aiding Vagabonds. And if you're playing with the Despot Infamy house rule, and the chances of getting a hand-locked item, or even just any item, are a little bit slim, but that benefit is just as good for most other factions. So, B rating. Pretty good. Am I going to go out of my way for it? Maybe, but oftentimes, especially if we don't yet have a T, I prefer to save my hammers for crafting items, which get me points and more actions and more item armor than crafting abilities as the Vagabond. For the Vagabond to craft an ability, it would have to be really good. Next up is the Lizard Cult. Swap Meat is great for the Lizard Cult, especially when your hand doesn't really help you with scoring or doing what you need to do. The Lizard Cult is the one faction that does all of its daylight actions with cards. It is one of the most card dependent factions and so naturally the ability to manipulate your hand a little bit is going to be invaluable to the Lizard Cult. So you look at your hand and you say, oh, I, I'm missing a mouse card. I can't score in mouse this turn even though I have two mouse gardens. Let me just do a swap meet. Oh, perfect. A mouse card or a bird card that I can dom swap and take a mouse dominance and then score with it. So swap meet can often be the difference between scoring and not scoring on a turn, which is huge for the lizards. And because the lizards have birdsong actions, you can plan your crusades a little bit better. You can say, okay, before I do any crusading or do any uh, actions at all, like sanctify, maybe I'll just do a swap meet. Oh, it's a root T. Well, okay, now that I know that I have this root T, instead of doing all of the, these crusades, I'm instead going to sanctify here or crusade over here to open up a building slot to then put a mouse garden and be able to craft this T. So being able to do this swap meet before you do all of your conspiracy actions will allow you to plan your conspiracies better. Anything that does things in birdsong typically has to just go off of gut, but Swap Meet gives you a little bit more information in your birdsong phase, and that's what makes it really nice for the Lizard Cult on top of your daylight card actions, which are your rituals. And here's a little table talk angle. It's not easy to do this on digital, but what you can do is say, hey, look, I have bird cards. Who wants a bird card in exchange for a suited card? I'm specifically looking for a rabbit card. And then maybe you turn to your friends, the cats, and say, do you by any chance have a rabbit card? I'll give you a bird card if you can kind of help me out. And of course, the card that you take from them still has to be random, but they could say, yeah, hey, lizards, I've got some rabbit cards. Go ahead, take from me. But you have to give me a bird card if you take my rabbit, right? Because there's this little dynamic the lizards have where they're the one faction that doesn't care for bird cards as much as pretty much every other. So if you make a deal with someone, you can do that little trade. 
It's still a random card you take, but you can kind of plan around that a little bit. Worst case scenario, you don't get what you want and you just give it back to them. It was a chance. And this, believe me, this is an S tier card for the Lizards. Very, very, very strong. I will try to craft it any chance I get. Am I going to craft it instead of scoring? Probably. Honestly, if it's early enough in the game, I might forego scoring two points in exchange of crafting swap meat and potentially scoring two, four, or six points in the future. All right, so swap meat is a decent enough investment that in the early game, I might craft it instead of scoring it. Late game, probably not. Late game, you need every point that you can get, but it is good. Next up is the Riverfolk Company. The Riverfolk can steal important cards and resell them at a profit. So if let's say somebody has the coins, you don't know that their hand is private, unlike yours, but you grab a card and go, oh, coins, huh? Okay, well, I'm definitely gonna keep them and I'll give you something else in my hand and you can either buy it back from me or just let me craft it for myself. So the Riverfolk is a great faction to be able to hog all the item cards because A, either people wanna buy them from you or B, the river folk are great at crafting and you want to craft as many items for yourself as you can. So really nice to have that extra chance at drawing uh, and stealing cards from other people because if they want them back badly enough, you can get a little bit of value from it. Now, an important little thing with the river folk company is that they are the only faction that doesn't draw for free. So if you have swap meat, you might want to think, okay, before I end my turn, let me draw one more card or maybe two, just to make sure that on my future turn, I will have something to give away for swap meet. Because as the river folk, sometimes you don't wanna waste actions drawing cards, but if I have two or three cards and they're all really good, propaganda bureau, bird ambush, coins, and then I end my turn, next turn comes around, I have swap meet. Okay, who am I gonna take? Oh, wait. Okay, I'll take a card from somebody, but then it's probably not gonna be that good and I'm not gonna wanna give away my coins, Propaganda Bureau or Bird Ambush. So just think before you end your turn, maybe draw one more card. Oh, look at that. Mouse Dominance, perfect. So now I have something to give away um, on my next turn when I do a Swap Meet because Swap Meet is Birdsong and the Riverfolk doesn't really have any choice actions in Birdsong. Everything is just automated upkeep and all of their decision points are in daylight and then evening they just set their prices and discard. So that's just a thing to think about. Also, a little important note is that uh, the rear folks' hand is always public. So what we talked about at the start is that when you use Swap Meet, the first thing is you take a card, it goes into your hand. As soon as it goes into your hand, before you give the other card away, you must make it public. So just think of it as as soon as a card is in the river folks hand, it's public information for everybody. So I can take a card, goes into the hand, everyone sees it. Even if I give that same card back, I don't get to just go, I take the card, mm-hmm, interesting, give it back. You must reveal it to the table because for that moment, it is in your hand, okay? Then you can give it back. Or of course, keep it and give back something else. At which point, everybody knows what you gave back because the card that you gave back was of course public in the first place. An important thing though is look at your funds box. Who's been buying from you? If you're constantly getting sales from the lizards, maybe don't swap meet the lizards, right? If you already have an established relationship with another faction, be nice to them. Just say, hey, look, um, even if you think you can get something of value of them, if they then turn on you, well now, you have no friends at the table, and the Rufo Company is all about maintaining at least one good relationship at the table, so don't bite the hand that feeds. So our rating for the Rufo Company is going to be A, and it has a lot of great value, but like I said, it kind of requires you drawing a couple extra junk cards you might not want, and the Rufo Company already has incredibly high card wealth anyway, right? It does cost an action, but you can draw as much as you want. So is it that valuable to be able to swap? Maybe, maybe not. I would like to craft it, but at the same time, I can understand maybe trying to sell it to somebody else to get a little bit of value out of it. 
as a sail rather than as a craft. Underground Duchy. So the Underground Duchy, like the lizards, can trade away their bird cards. They say, hey, Eerie, for example, you like bird cards. Well, do you have any suited cards that I might like? Maybe they, maybe they don't want to participate or they don't want to make an agreement with the Underground Duchy, but at least it's a potential route that you have if you want to establish some table talk. They can help you out and say, yeah, I have a fox card. Go ahead and take from me. And you would give me the bird card that you don't want. And then all of a sudden, the Underground Duchy has a non-bird card, which is great for swaying or for revealing. So it helps you get the needed suits that you um, require for your sway. Sometimes as the Dutch, you can get stuck if you have a whole bunch of cards of the same suit and none of them are nearby, so you might have trouble swaying your ministers. Well, with swap meet, you can diversify your hand, which is really important to be able to... It could be the difference between swaying a squire and swaying a noble or a lord or doing a build action and then everything else that you need doing that turn. So card wealth and card suits are also really important for the underground duchy. But there is the trade-off of you're going to be required to place a building in order to craft this card. And if you're placing a building, it's a big risk. And you always have to evaluate that risk. But I think that this is good enough in order to say it's an A-tier card. Because even if your building gets destroyed and you lose a card from your hand and your highest ranked minister, at least for the rest of the game, unless it gets saboteured, you have a little bit more say over the types of cards you're going to get for your turn. So pretty good. I think it's a decent card to have, but every time you craft something as the underground duchy, you have to be careful of what you're doing and where you're placing that building. Corvid Conspiracy. Again, another fun one because it's in Birdsong. So you can use this card on the same turn you craft it. As long as you have a rabbit plot, I craft swap meat and then, okay, boom, I get to steal a card or swap a card. Very nice. Most other factions, they use, uh, they craft swap meat and they have to wait a full turn before they can use it. Corvid is the only faction that gets to craft it. Surprise, take a card from someone's hand. But there's another cool way that Corvids can take cards from hands and that's through extortion. You can decide how you want to do this, but my advice is if you have extortion plots that you can steal a card from someone, you should flip the extortion First, take that random card, meaning that now you've taken their hand from having maybe three cards to now just two, and now you have a better chance of getting the one really good card they might have. So steal that card, then you swap meet, and now you'll have seen two out of the three cards that they started their turn with, and maybe you get the best card in their hand as opposed to using swap meet first, giving something back, and then using the extortion and possibly getting that same card back that you just gave them for the swap meet. So that's what my advice would be if you have an extortion that you could flip as well as swap meet. And this is an S tier card because the Corvids have to spend a card to recruit that could maybe make your decision a little bit easier. And they are a faction that relies a lot on crafting points. So do that, try and get some card value from you, uh, from your opponents, and use that information to place some effective plots. Just be careful because if they know that you took a hammer from them, they might say, hey guys, we have to go and take out that plot because they just got a hammer from me and they're gonna craft it next turn. Of course, that goes for other factions as well, but Corvids are just so easy to remove their crafting pieces. Just be careful. Um, the other interesting thing, I actually didn't think about this, but the more you can take specific cards from enemies, the more difficult you could make it to expose you. So if you take a card from an enemy and you take a fox card and give them back a rabbit or something like that, well, now you know that they might have a slightly more difficult time exposing your plots in fox, right? So think about that. There's generally going to be one faction at the table that's going to have the highest card wealth and the highest ability to expose you over and over again. Some factions remove plots by battling, like the Eerie are better at battling plots, and the Riverfolk Company are better at draw 
is that a bomb? No. Is it a snare? Because some factions have so many cards. So if you use swap meat on the enemy that's exposing you, you can make that a little bit harder to do. Just a thought. Okay. S tier. Very nice for the Corvids. Lord of the Hundreds. The most card poor faction? Of course we're going to like switching out cards and maybe getting a chance to get something we can actually use as opposed to most of the time with Lord of the Hundreds, draw a card, ugh, I didn't want this. Well, that's my one card this turn. So it helps to mitigate and offset the penalty of your low card draw. And of course, better chance at drawing or taking the good suited cards that you want for building up your strongholds and items that you could potentially craft. So if you start your turn or you start your game with swap meat in hand, are we going to set up our homeland with our, our initial stronghold in Rabbit? I say yes, very much worth it. The Lord of the Hundreds, similar to the Eerie, are going to be going out and battling a lot. And Lord of the Hundreds can be particularly vulnerable to ambushes, right? Because you have to battle so much, it could end up weakening your defensive forces around your warlord. So being able to just do a plan, I'm going to go and attack you. Let me swap meet you. Just to do a little bit of a check to see if they might have an ambush that you could evade. So I give it an S tier. Uh, a, because it helps you to potentially evade ambushes or something like that. And getting the items that you need, that helps you to offset the weakness of the Lord of the Hundreds, which is their low card draw. And the last faction, the Keepers in Iron. Like some factions, like the Cats, Keepers in Iron thrive on bird cards, and Swap Meat is just one more opportunity to potentially get a bird song. And better than that, it's a, a chance to get it in your bird song step, meaning that now, even if you didn't get the bird card that you want, you can still take a card and that will help you say, oh, well, I can craft this card, sweet. So now I can encamp in a clearing that I might not have just for the purposes of crafting something or for the purposes of recruiting, right? So you can plan your encamp around any potential cards that you take from somebody to do a recruit or to craft, right? And like the uh, Eerie and the Lord of the Hundreds, the Keepers in Iron often have no choice but to go out and battle, so better to check if they might have an ambush, the opponent that you're going to have to battle for the purposes of your delve and battle step. All right, so it really hurts to do a battle that you didn't even want to do as the Keepers in Iron and then get ambushed, so being able to check for that is great. S tier rating. Generally, the Keepers in Iron love to use every card they have for uh, putting it into the uh, retinue or for recruiting, but this is one of those cards that I would say it's a pretty strong craft because if it gets you plus two bird cards over the course of the game that you can then put into your retinue and now your retinue is more bird concentrated than it would have been without swap meat, I think for that reason swap meat is super duper worth it to craft. S tier. It's S tier for almost everyone according to me. So just a really, really fantastic card. So final thoughts are really great benefit uh, for the user. And like I was saying at the start, it is a potential threat against your opponents, right? If your opponents are looking at their hand with tea and coins, they're going to start sweating, thinking, please, 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 please don't swap meet me. And that threat is a potentially powerful weapon if you use swap meet on the right opponent. And... It is the sort of spiritual successor to Better Borough Bank, but I think it's better than Better Borough Bank. They're both birdsong cards, and they both get you better cards, but with Swap Meet, it's A, easier to craft, which is always nice, and B, it's not giving an opponent an unknown benefit, right? As Better Borough Bank, half the time I draw a card, I go, eh, not really great, but I'll take it, and my opponent ends up drawing something amazing. Well, at least now it's better information. I can take a card that's good and give them something or replace it with something that's not so good from my hand. So in that sense, it's a stronger ability than Better Borough Bank. The only advantage of Better Borough Bank is that it's more card wealth, which is nice for factions that can kind of do everything with the cards in their hand. But with Swap Meet, yeah, it's a little bit less 
of a pure benefit and more of a strategic, okay, who am I going to take from? Which card am I going to keep given the situation that I'm in? So it's just more choice and therefore a stronger player is going to find better uses for swap meet than something like Better Borough Bank. And the timing is just so practical. Anything that can be done in Birdsong, especially not start of Birdsong, but in Birdsong is going to be extra beneficial. Right? This is another reason that I think Swap Meet is stronger than Better Borough Bank because you could potentially do it at a later step in Birdsong than Better Borough Bank, which must be at the start of Birdsong. So the choice of whom you're going to steal from is very important. There's a temptation to always steal from the person who's in the lead, and that does make a lot of sense. But sometimes you want to think a little bit greedily. Well, I'd like to steal from the lizards because they show that they have a card I really want. Or maybe, well, the otters have a public hand and I see they have coins, so I'm going to go after them. So you got to kind of evaluate who the best target is. And here's another little thing. I've noticed a lot of people tend to say, think, well, you have four cards and you have two cards, so I'm going to take from the person who has more cards. And sometimes that does make sense if that's a faction that had the opportunity to spend cards and didn't, like the Woodland Alliance. Typically, they'll just mobilize everything that they can't use on that turn and then draw up a fresh hand. But if I notice that the Woodland Alliance specifically did not mobilize one or two cards, I know they kept something they really want. So keep in mind those situations when they did not use cards that they could have. It's the same thing for the Keepers in Iron. Right? They typically just want to fill up their retinue, but if there's a card in their hand that they don't do, they might be holding on to saboteurs or um, coffin makers. This is what I did in my tournament game. I held on to two cards in my hand over and over again because I wanted to craft them. And had somebody with swap meat spotted that, they might have thought better to use swap meat on this player who's holding on to their cards. More cards in hand doesn't mean that they're all good. You have more options, like let's say that the person with a bigger hand has coins, and someone with a smaller hand might also have good stuff, but your chances of getting it are slimmer in the bigger hand. So just remember, I guess all I'm saying is a bigger hand isn't necessarily a better one. So think about who you're going to use it on. And that's the end of this episode. Uh, this is a very strong card, as you probably figured out if you've crafted it a few times. And I just wanted to talk about some of the cool little interactions and things you can think about when you are playing Root and making good decisions with your uses of swap meet. So I will see you guys next time.